Let's talk some more about friction, just to solidify the ideas we have about friction before we go into actually trying to calculate things about it. So we know that friction is a force. It can pull in certain directions against the way we want it to something to move usually. And we also know that this force can have different strengths. Sometimes friction acts stronger than it does at other times. And the easiest way to think about something like this is going to be to think of a scenario and to try to imagine how things are going to act in real life. So here's a scenario. You're going to go buy a car, your first car. So you're hauling your piggy bank over to the car dealership. And hey, I happen to uh, be there at the same time and I took a picture of you. And so here you are. You hauled your car, your piggy bank over to the car dealership to buy a new car. It's quite heavy, this piggy bank, because you had saved up for a long time for your first car. So it's hard to drag. You're huffing and puffing along. And you know that there's a lot of friction acting against the way you want to slide this piggy bank. So in the picture, you're sliding it across the grass. The friction is resisting the motion. Now let's just imagine it begins to snow, because you've been so long dragging this piggy bank to the car dealership that winter came on. and as it begins to snow and the ground gets covered with snow and ice, you notice that it becomes quite a bit easier to move this piggy bank. And that's really the first concept that I, that I want to talk about. So different surfaces have inherent properties within them that change the strength of the force of friction. And this we call the coefficient of friction. So it's called the coefficient of friction. So every pair of surfaces has a unique coefficient of friction which describes how much those surfaces resist being pulled, resist motion. In physics the coefficient of friction is represented by a, a Greek letter mu. It's kind of like a U with a, a big tail on the one side. The Greek letter mu. So we'll add that to our arsenal of Greek letters and uh, we'll see that in the next video further about developing the formula for the force of friction. But for right now we just want to understand the concept. So it's it's makes sense to think about uh, an object with a, a rough surface on it and it might be sliding along another rough surface. And we know that that is going to be a very high coefficient of friction. It's going to be very difficult to move those two objects. And we can compare that, of course, to having a very smooth object sliding along a very smooth surface, which should be easier. So this is like your poor piggy bank on the grass, and this is like a hockey puck on ice. Very different amounts of friction, very different coefficients of friction. So this is our first important concept, that coefficients of friction are properties of materials that describe how well they allow motion. So let's go back to our scenario. You're huffing and puffing away on this treasure chest that you're hauling to the car dealership and the next day there, there comes a Chinook and all the snow melts and it gets super muddy. Now of course mud is going to have a different coefficient of friction. Uh, goes back to our first concept. But besides that you message your friends to come help you push your piggy bank through this mud or get it unstuck from the mud. So all your friends come to join you and they're pushing and pulling and trying to get this thing out of the mud. And every once in a while they budge it a little bit. And then you figure out, well, when it budges, we have to keep it sliding. Once it's moving a little bit, it becomes a lot easier to move. And this leads us to our second concept, which, which says that when an object is at rest or not moving, it has generally a higher coefficient of friction than when it is moving. And this we call the difference between static and kinetic friction. So static meaning it's staying in one spot and kinetic meaning that it's moving, it has motion. So in general, and this doesn't have to always be true that static is higher, but in general static friction is stronger than kinetic friction. So it's harder to get an object moving than it is to get it to continue moving. Now, like I said, 
they could be the same for some particular surfaces, but they are often different and generally static is stronger. And we know this in everyday life, right? When you try to push something, once you get it budging, then it will keep going. Or for a less pleasant example, if you start slipping, then you move to kinetic friction, then all of a sudden, wham, you fall down on the floor. But to start slipping in the first place was harder than it is to keep slipping. Okay, back to our scenario. So your friends have done their job. You got it stuck, unstuck from the mud. It's back on the grass. You can probably handle this yourself again. Your friends have got to go. So you thank them for their work. And you're so generous that you also open up your piggy bank to pay them for their services. So you open up your piggy bank, you pay them liberally, and you try to scrape together as many pennies out of your piggy bank as you can and give them lots of pennies. This way, your piggy bank becomes a lot lighter. And of course, you notice when you close up your piggy bank and start moving again that it's a lot easier to move. So when you made it lighter, it also became easier, or the force of friction became less. So that's really our third concept, that the force of friction is dependent on weight. Those are really the three concepts that I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you ended up buying a very nice car, and I hope you also got winter tires on it, because that's also very important from a friction perspective. So let's just quickly recap our three important points. First of all, different surfaces have different coefficients of friction. Rough surface has a higher coefficient of friction, makes it more difficult to move. The second concept was that there's a difference between static and kinetic friction. Usually, static is a higher coefficient than kinetic. And the third concept was that the force due to friction depends on the weight of the object. The harder you push down, or the heavier an object is, or if you would have imagined somebody sitting on that treasure chest while you were trying to pull it, it would get much more difficult. There's no assignment for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and it should set the basis for the next video.